Good evening. This is a Memorial Day weekend of May 2009. This is the third episode of Reflections on East Granby, and I'm the host, Mike Malloy. Tonight with us we have Anthony Stenitis, a resident of East Granby and a longtime resident of the area, and he's going to share some of his memories with us tonight. Hello, Tony. Yeah, how are you? How are you doing? Good to yeah, see you. Great, great. All right. Okay, now why don't we start with trying to just give people a background and give them an idea of where you come from. Right. Uh, and you were from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania originally? Pennsylvania, Scranton. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. You were born in Scranton, Pennsylvania in 1931? 31. Just before the, well, right after the Depression started. Right. Tough right. times, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All the way through it. Brothers and sisters? Uh, brothers and sisters. I had two, bro two half brothers. Okay. John and Joe. Okay. And uh, they passed away years ago. Okay. And that's, I'm the one left. You're, and you're in pretty good shape. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. So yeah. you were, uh, you lived in Pennsylvania till you were 16, I believe? Oh, 16, said. yeah. And you came to Connecticut yeah, to right. work in tobacco. The tobacco. Though Pennsylvania didn't have no, no kind of work down there. Right. So the fellow that I was with, uh, he says, uh, hey, he said, Tony, come on to Connecticut and we'll go get uh, some work up there. So we came up here for the summer. So if, if you were 16, that was right after World War II. Yeah. Yeah. So came up 47, 48, and 49 uh, for the summers only. So you were basically mig migratory worker for that a few migratory, years as a young guy. The same yeah. as the rest of the people that came over here. That's so you went where the work was. The work was. You went to wherever there was where because wherever the work, the work was. Right. I even went to New York State. Uh, I was 15. Really. With the with the oh. same guy. Oh, okay. And we went out there and stayed for the for the summer picking vegetables. Okay. Fifty, 50 cents a basket. No for kidding. Picking peas and uh, uh, corn and everything else. But the first things we started with was peas. Okay. And beans, and it was fifty cents a basket. You had to pick a and lot of a lot of fruit, vegetables to make fifty cents. Huh? Oh, it was a, it was a tough job. Was it? Yeah. We stayed there what three weeks and we came back home again. Before we go on to what happened in Connecticut, you, you said for for a short time you worked it in uh, in coal in, the in coal a coal mines? mine. Okay, right. Three days. My brother smuggled me in because I was sixteen. You're too young. Should be eighteen. Right. And I worked three days in the coal mine. Wow. And that's when I says, no more work in a coal mine. I'm going to go to Connecticut with my my friend here, that, and we come out here. That was a tough job. You said you're a foreman. Didn't he, make it after. The he thing. didn't. You want me to say that? <laughs> sure. He, yeah. 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 Uh, they 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 blasted the coal. Right. And the fella came in, and it wasn't the smoke hadn't cleared. Okay. And he was on his on his. The, I don't know if they could see the the height. It was about four foot in the the where we were working. Sure. And the smoke from the blast uh, was in there and he walked in ahead of time because he wanted to set the poles up so it'd be safe for everybody to go in there. Right. And he was bending down, chopping a hole to put the pole in and some loose rock on the top fell down, hit him in the back and the pick went right straight through. Wow. It's a tough that first lesson. That was the end of my work. <laughs> you, said, you said, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. <laughs> okay. So we're back to going to Connecticut. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so you came up to Connecticut, you were associated with which company? American Sumatra is the first one we, we started working with. American Sumatra. American Sumatra Tobacco Corporation. Okay. And, and they were out of New York, you said? No, they were a, a European. A Euro oh, okay. Yeah, from right. From Europe. So from there, you, you came up and you were working just field work? Field work. Wow. And for, the, for those three years. Right. And then when we went to Kalman Brothers, so you we were... moved in 50. Okay. My bro we brought uh, the family out here, my mother. Oh. And my, my, my one of my brothers, and uh, they were working here. My mother passed away, and I, I got married. We moved over to, with Cul Culbro. So the draw was the steady employment. You brought the rest of the family along. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's just my mother and uh, one brother. Okay. And they went back. Uh, they went back. Uh, my brother went back after a couple of years out here, and he didn't care for tobacco work. He's going over to California. So oh. he went to California. I don't know what he was doing. We lost track of them. Really? So then uh, my mother passed away. I got married, and it was me and my wife then. Wow. So we worked for a couple of years. So you, when you first came to the state, where were you living? 
when I first came, I was in Granby here. Okay. And there was, there was a farm five up in Granby here. Okay. And it was in a cabin out in the woods. Right. And me and this fella, that my friend, we lived in that cabin each year for three years. Okay. I, I'm sometimes I'm going to go and take a look and see if that cabin is still <laughs> yeah, there. Right. It's in the woods. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. So that was so. Then at one point you ended up moving down the road here, though, right? You were down. You said you were in the housing down off Floydville. Oh, I, yeah. There was a. It was a converted tobacco shed. Okay. And they made apartments. In oh, there. Okay. I think it was five apartments in a big long tobacco. Predecessor shed. of condominiums. Huh? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what the company's done. I yeah. mean, to save their people. Right. They worked year round if they lived in the company uh, apartment. So they needed they needed staffing through the year. So they right. were, they provided right. some sort of housing. Right? Yeah. It's so when you were when you were down in the uh, in that housing, that's I, you said you mentioned something about that was about the time that you met your wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got married. Okay. And then when I moved over to uh, uh, Coleman Brothers, right, they gave me a little house down on uh, down on Hop Meadow Street, where you come from the airport. Okay. Okay. When you or the old road before they they made the new road, it had a bend in it. Okay. And then there's some tobacco sheds there. Okay. And right next to one of the tobacco sheds there, there was a little house, and they let me have that house. Is that the dead end road now? That's a dead end road there. Yeah, and there's yeah. still there's still a few houses down there, if I recall. Oh yeah. 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 So that was. Uh, so then from there, you, you, you after you got married, did you move into some other sort of housing? Or? Well, uh, her her grandfather and grandmother lived up right across, directly across from the airport. There's a little house there, maybe you noticed it. In it's Simsbury? still there now. Yep. And uh, we, we went in, in there with her. So with kind them. of like on the corner of Herman Drive there? there? Yeah, 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 a little yeah. house. Yeah, okay. they lived there. Wow, and the airport Grandfather was there. Grand then. Yeah, the airport was there too. Okay. Yeah. So you, so there, so how long were you there? Oh, a couple of years, and then the company gave me another place over on Hoskins Road. Okay. Uh, for for they had a farm over there, so the company says, well, why don't you come over here? You'll be closer to the farm, and we're going to give you probably a job supervising. Okay. So I went, we we moved over there. We were on the ground floor, and then there were some people up on the second floor. Oh wow! So as you as you stayed you stayed with the company. You were still, and they yeah. they changed names a couple times. You said. Yeah, but that's that's further down the line. But okay. while while I was still moving around, I moved. I lived there, and uh, then uh, they moved me uh, down to Bloomfield. Over the over the years, I lived in Bloomfield too. Wow. Yeah. So. Then the, the the tobacco fields that they had, you said at one point they were they were in how many different towns or how? Oh, many? they were in Simsbury. They were down in Bloomfield, and they were in uh, Ellington, wow. and Hatfield, and Granby. Okay. They were all over. At, at one time, I think they mentioned even before my time, they said something about twenty six farms. Do the fields now? The, the, the fields that are in, actually in East Granby, the ones that I'm familiar with, are right off of Hartford Avenue. There's a big, uh, several yeah, hundred right acres where I live there, now. right in front of where you live now. Yeah. And there is, uh, there's also the, the the fields down off of Spoonville Road, right? Spoonville Road. Did right. you work either of those farms? Yeah, I I, yeah. I, I ran the farm on Stone Road at the corner Stone Road. Of Stone that's Road. the name of the road, right? Yeah, that's where the nursery is now. Right. And I, I ran that farm for three years. I was a manager, farm manager. Okay. Three years. How many? 71, 72, and 73. Okay. In there. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's one of the farms there. And then they had one in uh, up Stone Road up a little further, what they called Farm 26 there. Okay. They got all those big new factories over in there now. Yeah, that's pretty prime industrial land. Yeah, yeah. yeah Some of that actually goes into Windsor, I believe. It goes into Windsor. Yeah. yeah. Now this farm, the one, on, the one that they just uh, recently sold the farm that's in back of where you are to Thrall. Yeah, O.J. Thrall, and he also purchased uh, the farm over in Ellington. Okay. We had a farm in Ellington. So he's actually expanding his he's expanding, tobacco. He's expanding, but I think production. he already uh, uh, resold it. Uh, we were, I don't know what it is, the truth or not. The one in Ellington or the one in East Grand? No, the one in, uh, uh, in uh, both farms, probably, uh, they sold it to a builder. They're going to build houses when he gets done growing tobacco. 
See, so, he, he bought all that land, then he got, the, he got the money coming from these other people. He resold it to these people. Well, if I'm not mistaken, the property off of, on Hartford Avenue in East Granby is, is protected. Right. They, they, he sold the development rights to right. the state. Right. So I don't think they can build houses there. Or well, whatever. Yeah, I so it's probably mixed. Yeah. But you, uh, so the acreage behind your house now, it's, I've only gone back there once or twice. There's got to be a couple hundred acres back there. Well, I think there's about 400. 400 acres. Yeah. And that was actively farmed all the time uh, when you Well, were. that's that's total. Right. But actually farmed, maybe there was 200 acres. Right. But I mean, the total land, maybe 400. There was a fire up there last year, one of those barns. Yeah, one burned. of the sheds burned down, yeah. full of tobacco. Now, thinking back to when you first started tobacco, what has changed? What, what has what? changed in the industry? What has changed in the way that they do it? It seems well, like every, it's fairly... Everything was the, the cost of the, the growing it. The cost the, of the... Sure, plus the people. Okay. They didn't have enough... enough no, no white person wanted to go and work in that. Oh, really? Okay. So they had to go on and get extra help to Jamaicans. Yep. They had the girls and boys from different different states coming in here okay. to work. It was too expensive. So basically the evolution of the workforce is, right. is the biggest right. change you've seen? Right. Yeah, because right. Yeah, I can remember when I was in, in junior high school and even preceding that in Enfield, the kids used to work tobacco in the summer. Yeah. They'd have a bus that would come and pick yeah, up. Yeah, I had, I had my, my, two, my two uh, young girls. When right. they were growing up, they even worked in there. And boy, that's some experience it's for a kid to be doing. Yeah, oh yeah. It was, and it was, it's good. It's good work. It is good because work. Because yeah. I was supervisor too. And right. I made them do what is supposed to be done right. Right, right. right. They didn't get no any breaks. No messing around, no breaks. Because their dad was the <laughs> they boss. They didn't want right. to work, but I made them work. Right. And that was the best thing for them. Did you, uh, so other than the... The, the change in the workforce. Is there anything else that stands out? To, it seems like the the way that you grew it, uh, with the with the tents or the. It, now you mostly worked in tent tobacco, right? In tent, to, it's all tent tobacco that I grew in. I wouldn't. Okay. I didn't care much for the outdoor tobacco. For the broadleaf. Yeah. 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 Because I was in tent tobacco. Yeah, that was. And your, that was that was my field. That was your specialty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I didn't want no part of outdoor tobacco. Yeah. Uh, Sounds like they treated you pretty good over the years as a. I lived in the in the houses, and I never paid a dollar's rent. They Not a dollar's to... rent. Right. It was always free because I, I I slid on my butt when I started. Right. In the tobacco. Yep. And I made timekeeper. I made the uh, first uh, supervisor, and then I made first a uh, uh, third man, second man, and then I eventually made the farm. Seventy one, seventy two, and seventy three. They gave me a farm. Wow. But I slid my butt and I learned every trick there was. Why don't you was. explain to the viewers what that means? Because I don't think any, some people that didn't work in the field don't realize that you actually slide on your slide, butt pick down and to, the, pick, down, picking tobacco. Picking tobacco right. and suckering tobacco right. and, yep. Yep. Suckering, you sat down. Yep. If it was, if it was damp ground, they gave you a burlap bag to, to right, right. make a diaper out of it. Right. And you slid. If the stones were there, you slid over the stones. Just if it was sandy or nice, you slid along, yeah. and you sit there, and you'd pick tree leaves here, and then you'd go pick tree leaves here, and you could put them on your lap here right. because you were, you were going yourself along. And then along. when you got a little stack, you put it in between the the, the tobacco roll right. where the, the stocks are. Yep. And then there'd be another fella coming behind, and he was pulling a basket. We used to call them the dragger, right? Them up. Well, he, we picker, call them well, draggers. Draggers and pickers, yeah. yeah if I remember. Draggers yeah. and pickers. That's a whole yeah. Lot. yeah. It's yeah. A, it was tough. It was hard. Eventually, work. you got paid by the hour. Right. But eventually, later, uh, they put it. Uh, they when they brought the, the boys and girls up, they brought the boys for picking, and they gave them piecework. Right. And it was something like five cents a bent or six cents a bent. Yeah. For. Picking and the girls worked in the sheds on the machines. Yeah, this was before yeah. any minimum wage laws or yeah, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paid as little yeah. as they could. Right? Yeah. But you didn't have the. Uh, it's not, it was hard work. Did you ever it do was, the dragging part of it, or you were a pretty good picker, so they kept oh, you? Oh, you did both. I don't want to say that I was the fastest. Okay. But I put my time in, and I knew exactly how to do it. Yeah. And I would challenge any one of those kids oh, yeah. to see if any one of them could beat me. The reason for that was. I got a whole bunch of them, yeah. and I showed them how to do it and how fast I was, and then showing, hey, you guys could do the same thing, you know? Yeah. I was a supervisor, and I, I, I started explaining to them that that's what you want to do if you want to make money. Right, right. And the faster you pick it, the more money you're going to make. 
So you were a good good example. A good example. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. Do it like that guy, and we'll yeah. be all right. right? <laughs> yeah. So you ended up with okay. So and that so you you got married through that through that period yeah. of time, and you had. Two kids. Two kids. Yeah, and two girls. You, you stayed in the profession because they kept moving you along. Yeah, and changing, changing places and working on different farms. One one year you may be on this farm, the next farm they transfer you over there. If somebody was sick or something, they put you over on that farm. Right. And you just moved around. That's it. Now, what? Thinking back to the time, what, so you lived after you stayed in uh, off of Floyville Road. Where did you go from there? You bounced all around to different. I, I was. Houses? I bounced around in different places. What, did you ever actually live in East Granby during that period of time? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, East Granby. I I got yeah, I got sick of uh, one of the houses. Okay. Over there, and I I, I on uh, what's that uh, where they just put that farm in down there. Hmm. It was a we had a we had a farm over in there with, with fields, uh, down with the firehouse. What's that road by, by the firehouse? Oh, uh, Seymour. Seymour. Yeah. So there was a farm there. There, there or was a house a, there. There was a fields there. Okay. And uh, down going, you go down. There was a they they just rebuilt a new house there. That funny looking one that stands up in the oh, air. Oh, I know what you're talking about where there's the a, there's where a, the horse ranch is. Right, right. Yeah, just I lived in that there. little house there, and they re, they tore it down. And they built another house there, but I think the garage is still there. Okay. Yep. I lived in there for a few years. Okay. And uh, when I would live there, I was working down on Farm Seven. What well, Seven was was a Stone Road farm in the seventies there. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you actually lived there. I lived there for a couple of years. They had a house there. Yeah. Yeah. But did they did they tend to have a house at each farm for the for well, the uh, foreman? Yeah. Then or, they had one the right at right in the right at at the home uh, the home office what they call a house. They had they had barracks all over. They had camps for where boys. was the home office? Pardon? Where was the home office? Well, I mean, uh, for the farm. Okay. It was on Stone Road at the corner there. Okay, so that was for that farm. That was for that okay. farm. Right. But they had camps uh, for boys and girls and Jamaicans and Puerto Ricans and right. everything scattered. All each each of one of the farms probably had one camp. Okay. Because they were getting short of help, so they put Puerto Ricans here or Jamaicans there, and then they had some camps for the girls and camps right. for the boys. That they brought from Pennsylvania and West Virginia and Florida and really? all over. So you saw quite a, yeah. oh, quite and, a diverse uh, workforce right. over the years. And the, yeah. the, the Puerto Ricans, when they brought them, they had a problem. The poor, for, they, they, they really wanted to give them, pay them for coming here, and if they stayed the length of time, they would pay them to fly them back to Puerto Rico. Okay, but a lot of them they didn't want to work in tobacco. So when they they sent a plane load of Puerto Ricans here to work on the farms, they come to Bradley, yeah. they unload at Bradley, and we had buses there for them. When they got off the plane to go to the bus, there were some people from Hartford that had cars in the parking lot. Oh. And instead of going to the bus, they looked around and they said, "Hey." You look, yeah. There's a free plane flight. There's free plane for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense because there's a pretty the, at that point you'd already had a fairly fairly large Puerto Rican community in this country. Yeah, yeah. So it was there was more of a local connection. That's right. For them, the Jamaicans who they couldn't do it with them. The Jamaicans hadn't really settled yet. Right. So, right. But a it's, lot of a lot of them have stuck around. <laughs> oh, oh I mean, I, that's yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So but, uh, kind it's, of the tale of human history how we get different places, right? <laughs> yeah. You came up from Pennsylvania. Right. <laughs> but uh, but I made uh, I made the uh, foreman right, and then uh, then I got mad. You got and mad? I said, yeah, okay. I got mad, and I says, look, I says you're you're really killing me. Okay. I says uh, I made foreman, and I says when 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 the, when the spring work comes, I go out to the farm, I work all summer, then all of a sudden you say, Tony, we need you in the warehouse. Right. So I'd go in the warehouse and I'd be a foreman in the warehouse running a crew. Right. And everybody else that worked as supervisors on some of the farms, in the winter they worked in a workshop and they didn't do much. Okay. They were just repairing, fixing tools. Kind of and tinkering. Tinkering around. Yeah. And here I am, I'm slaving myself in the warehouse. So I says, look, let's cut the baloney out. I says, if you want me to stay, I says, you either keep me in the warehouse or you keep me on a farm. Right. But I says, I'm not going to kill myself on the farm and then kill myself in a warehouse for this, the little bit of money you're giving me. Right. So they, they stopped me from going to the farm and I worked the warehouses. 
Okay, so you became like the warehouse. Yeah. We are, I, I could, it sounds like you were a pretty hard worker, so they wanted oh, to I keep was, you around. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say that I'm not. not gonna, That's right. Yeah, yeah. So then I started in warehouse. And I stayed in, stayed in the warehouse, and I didn't go out. Once in a while, they'd say, Tony, we could use you out on the farm or something for a couple of weeks. Somebody is sick or something. You've done it before. He says, well, come on out, and why don't you help them out, help them out a little bit. The, where, the warehouse was a little slack. There wasn't much doing. So, right. so therefore, I'd go out and help them out a little bit. So you did, you did what they But had. I wouldn't stay out there. All I right. told them outright, you're not going to bring me out there and then make me stay there. I think most of, probably the youngest, the younger folks today that are being brought up and going forward as people look back they really don't don't understand how how uh, extensive tobacco farming was in the Connecticut Valley right, I mean it, right. Oh, it was spread out all over right all over so and they, they, they leased so much land right that right now you wouldn't even know where tobacco was grown right tobacco right. They're, they're building houses where there was tobacco before right that people don't even realize there there was a farm there well it was a legitimate agricultural industry in Connecticut that was a right, worldwide that was, industry they, that they was a worldwide the there even right now there's houses built in East Granby when you go out towards uh, Suffield yep on the right hand side just there's a the brook yeah and then right where the knoll is right. I grew tobacco there myself no kidding right wow. right on top of the hill and now they got houses there so they grew it almost anywhere they could anywhere yeah. they could any yeah. little small field yeah. Simsbury, they had, when I worked on Farm 2, what they call it, okay. Hoskins Road, they had a garage, the, the people that owned the garage leased the, the shed out to them. Right. And the shed was, the garage was, you drive your car in, then it had a roof, and then uh, the shed was in the back. The people parked their car in there, we put tobacco in there, and they put it right over the top of where the car is. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Right. They were stuffing it anywhere they, they could. Were anywhere they could. Wow. Yeah. I, now, thinking back to the area, you, you, you know, this is, we, we're, we try to get a picture from each person that comes in of what your memories of, you've been around the area, but yeah. in East Grammy specifically, do you, do you remember back when you first came and, and comparing it to what it's like now? What, what would be the biggest difference that you, that you remember? Other than the fact that they built houses on all your tobacco. Yeah, farms. but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's just all open, it was all open land, and I, I, I couldn't figure them using all that land. Right. They were, when they could use, build, they build on it. Right. And I says, uh, why, why would you use this? So the, the company said, well, we, we, we try to do that, but she says, with all the people that are growing the shade, right. that they, they want, if we give up anything, they're going to they're gonna take the land. Okay. Yeah. So they, they, they've, they, they've planted a lot of tobacco to maintain their share of the market. That's basically. right. Yeah. That's right. And I was thinking, well, they could build houses. People are looking for houses. This Why was just, past, just after the war, especially. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. And, the, and everything was tobacco. Right. Everything was tobacco. Yeah. You had to go some other town someplace out of, out of the way to, work to, get, to get a living. Well, they called it the Tobacco Valley. For the a Tobacco reason. Valley. Yeah. 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 And it was tough. It was tough going. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you remember that now? Just your, if you were to say one thing that's changed the most, I guess it would be you said the the yeah. uh, the workforce has evolved quite a bit, but um, other than that, the technology, the tractors, all that's pretty similar, isn't oh, it? Oh, it, it right. right. Yeah. I when I, when I started, I I didn't mention it, but I I worked with horses and uh, oh really and, and mules. So they were still using horses they, and they, when mules? I first started. That's all we had. 40s. They, they had tractors, but very few. They really? they used horses for cultivating. Mules for cultivating, and even the setters. No and kidding. I'll tell you one thing: I was working on the setter. Right. And the guy that was driving the horse down the line. Right. He fell asleep. Okay. He <laughs> fell asleep. And no, no I'm, automatic I'm, shut I'm off on the, the horse. I'm putting the plants in. <laughs> right. With my partner, it's a two two wheel setter. <laughs> right. And there's two people there, me and him. Yeah. And we're sitting here and we're putting the plants in, and all of a sudden the guy nudges me. He says. Hey, he says, you know, we're going in the wrong direction. The guy that was driving the, the, the horses up there, he fell asleep. And the horses just went by themselves. And instead of going this way, we were going that way on, <laughs> on an angle. So that was the most crooked line that, of tobacco you, you, you ever never planted? Seen, <laughs> I tell him. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's so it ended went. well, obviously. You're here to talk. And then, uh, <laughs> when we still lived in what? Uh, Simsbury. Right. At the, at the, 
we uh, we used to go with my with my wife's grandfather. Right. And we take a team of horses and go down to Simsbury, and they had corn planted down there. And uh, we take the two uh, two horses and the wagon and the cultivators right. and go down there. We'd cultivate corn all day. Nobody had come to see us. We just go down there, cultivate with the horses, and you know, when it was lunchtime, those horses they automatically stopped, and you took them back to eat. Really? If it was twelve o'clock. You better take them back there, otherwise they ain't gonna do no more. They were when that horse horses. stopped, they knew what time it was. <laughs> right, right. They knew what time it was. No kidding. There's... Well, we call it, no, I can't say the word. Oh, okay. I well, can't say the word. Okay. <laughs> what they call that, that the, the elbow down there. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. I, I thought that uh, that horses and mules and that sort of thing had gone oh, by the wayside back in the when, 20s and 30s. When, when, I, I had to go in to harness to put the, the team in. Yeah. And, in order to put the harnesses on, one of the mules, you had to take a stick on this way. And when you went there, you took the harness on your shoulder and the hand. Right. And in the other hand, you took this stick with the point in it, just like okay. the bullet. Yep. And you put it up against the stall, and you, you threw the harness on. Because if you didn't have that stick, that mule would push it right up against you. Oh, and, so you had and, to poke him off you if he pushed you, you, That's right. Really? Yeah. Wow. Some of them were mean. Stubborn, they were mean. Huh? Yeah, they don't say it for no reason. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I, that, that, that's interesting. Uh, so if you, were to, if, you must have worked with some interesting characters over the years. Oh, oh. <laughs> When I stayed in the camp where I'm yeah. living now, yeah, there was a camp there. Right. I think I stayed uh, one part of one summer in there. Right. Uh, and uh, they had people that they brought from Hartford. Okay. They were called winos or drunks or whatever right. you want to call right. them. They worked daily. Yeah. And they used to pay them uh, daily. And if, if they came, they used to take a truck, put benches in there. Right. And we used to call them. Call them cattle cars. Oh, okay. Because there was an open truck, yep. and they had benches in there, and they'd line up all these drunks on these chairs okay. and haul them back and forth to Hartford in these old trucks. Sure. And I they was in the camp, and one night uh, they had a drinking party. At the camp? At the camp. Oh, great. <laughs> so there, I'm sleeping, and I wake up. They're still making noise. They're having a heck of a time. Right. So I start hollering about, come on, shut up. Let, yeah, me yeah. Go, let me go to bed. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I, I, everything quieted down. I said, oh, they're gone to bed. Good. So I'm about 4 o'clock in the morning. This fellow next to me, he's making all kinds of sounds. Oh, yeah? And I went over and I shook him. I says, hey, I said, will you stop making all this noise? I says, I know you drank and everything. Right. So uh, he's making all kinds of sounds. So I went and put the light on to go and get him out of there. So when I put the light on, I looked down at him, and it was a pocket knife Ooh. In, his, in his neck. So he'd gotten in a fight with one of the other he guys? He got in a fight with the drunk. And, Ouch. And yeah. I says, that's enough for me here. Yeah, and right. I says, that's it. I says, I'll be glad to get back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that was when you first started. That was right? when you yeah. first started, yeah. But Pretty... there's there are different things that happen yeah. along the line. Yeah. I worked in the warehouse. I didn't even get to the warehouse part of it yet. Okay. But a guy chased me around the warehouse with a steel pipe. Oh, boy. And <laughs> because I, I fired him. Okay. He didn't want to do the work that I gave him, assigned him. I was a, I was a foreman there. Yeah. And uh, I, I said to the, the guy, I says, I, we can't use that guy anymore. I says, uh, he doesn't want to do what he's told. He wants to do what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. Right. He doesn't want to listen to us. So the guy says, all right, we'll pay him off. So I think it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon or something, we got rid of him. And he went and he used to use a, a two-and-a-half-foot pipe when they were bulking tobacco. Okay. Curing it. Yeah. And there were some stand up, standing up by the, the, the door. He grabbed one of those pipes and he started chasing me. And I wasn't about to, to have that guy come after me with a steel pipe. Your speed came in handy then. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, I knew all the, trick, the, all the crooked ways. You knew all the back of, roads? All, I got out of there. They called the police. They picked him up and locked him up. And oh, wow. I went to court and the never, guy never showed up. Right. And that so was, it was there was some some rough guys oh, and some. Uh, well, yeah. there were some guys that I took knives off of. They oh. came in with knives under in a sheet right. on them, 
and we didn't we didn't want somebody to get fighting and have him. So I, got, <laughs> I even got a couple of them right now that I took off of them and I never gave them back because they never showed up for work back uh, to okay. work. I said, hey, let me take the knives. I said, we don't want no problem here. Right. I said, we'll give them back to you when you want them. But I said, I'm going to have to take them because I don't want no problems. So you ran a pretty tight ship. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We had to. So. We had to because, I mean, a guy walking around with a with knife, whew, too bad. Yeah, uh -huh. you don't need that in the fields. Yeah. yeah. Especially it's, if it's hot out there, people get kind of irritable. That's right. Yeah. Well, we used to, even when I was a kid there, uh, we used to put the pick up snakes when we were picking the back when I started. Right. We put snakes in the baskets and sent them to the shed and then scare the girls. Oh, that's right. The girls would work in the shed. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And they'd, they'd be picking up the leaves <laughs> and all of a sudden there's a snake laying in there. Oh, no. Uh, we, we pulled a lot of tricks. So yeah. in terms of the area, I mean, a lot of the land that you you farmed, especially down in Windsor, even in, in East Granby and in Granby, has been developed commercially also. I mean, a lot right. of the, the Griffin Company was, was a big... Yeah, well, I mean, everybody fussed about all the tobacco land that right. building houses even Simsbury they right. had lawsuits going for it really and right now I, I had uh, fields in uh, East Granby I had some in Windsor Locks this is one farm now right I had them scattered all over I could uh, by the, if I could use all day just to travel the fields that I had right I had a hundred acres and I had a pickup truck and by the time I went to check this field and that field and that field and that field all over I could be all day. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was extensive? scattered out because I leased one lot from you, maybe five acres or right. ten acres, and the next guy gave me five or ten more acres, right. and then fifteen acres over here, and five over there. So you'd patch it together <sighs> any way you could. Now they ended up buying a lot of that land. Yeah, though, that's a, yeah. The big fields they actually ended up buying over time. Oh, oh over over time. Yeah. yeah. With so the they, better ones. Yeah, because some of the lots they they didn't they didn't worry about them. The tobacco, the shade tobacco, if I'm not mistaken, was ex exclusively used as wrapper. As a wrapper. So as they would they would hang it in the, the the hang it in the barns, dry it out, pack it up, and they'd ship yeah. it to where where Dominican the, Republic. Dominican, and that's where they would actually. Yeah, well, at first the first day we were doing it. Right. When they cured it, we right. had our own warehouses around here. Okay. And uh, they they we'd done it, but once it started getting overabundant paying everybody all these high wages right. they sent to the Dominican Republic. And they would actually roll up the And the then they'd make their, they would just roll it up and pack it in cartons and load trailers. Right. That warehouse that I finished up with on Blue Hills Avenue when I retired, we, we sent maybe 50 trailers a, a year out of there or more. Right. With, with cartons of tobacco. They took it down out in the sheds, packed it in cartons, and we loaded trailers with it. Okay. So you, you would actually, so basically the product, I mean, you were doing based the same thing for 50 years. You did, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. You, you, and you, right, right from the, from the ground up. Yeah, you've yeah. worked every angle possible. Every angle possible. I had to go to the Dominican Republic and uh, show them. They were bulking down there, but we had a way of bulking here in Connecticut. Right. And we were going to do it in Dominican. And I used to go down there a week or two out of a month down there, and then my boss himself would go down there and he'd show them and would even have some arguments. Really? <laughs> because the Dominican Republic, they were doing it one way, and if you try to change somebody, not that, those people, they didn't want to make the change. Right. So I'd go down there and I'd start making the changes, and then all of a sudden, my bro my boss would go down there, right? And uh, he's uh, when he came back, he says, "Tony, didn't you get him started?" I says, "Yeah." <laughs> they wouldn't, but they I says they're not listening to you because when I go back down there, they're still doing it the same way as they were. So I says, "I don't even know why I'm going down there." Right. Because right. they don't listen. It was tough. But to eventually, get. over time, they 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 picked it all up. They adapted some of that. They adapted our yeah. way of doing it. Okay, great. They had their own way of doing it, but we wanted to do it our way. Now, historically, you were, you were in this area. Did you do you remember uh, there was some pretty big like in in this would have affected the agricultural community. There was a big couple big hurricanes in the fifties. There was uh, yeah, must have been some storms over the years. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I had to go to Hatfield. Right. The, the, uh, what was it? Even in May, I think we had a storm, and it tore up all the tobacco cloth and the plants and everything. And I had to go to Hatfield with a busload of people to help out. To help and get we, back. Yeah, we had to go and repatch all the, put the clot back up, and they had to reset it again. 
and some bad storms. Do you I remember mean, the, the hurricanes in the 50s? Uh, 55 and 50? The 55 flood. The big flood, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that must have and, had some impact yeah, on the it's agricultural a, oh, <laughs> agri Anybody that had plants near the, near the ground. Right. Yeah, it's... Yeah, just yeah, wipe them out. Just pop them out. Easy. So most, well, but most years you were able to get through without too much. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you had water. If you, if you was getting too dry, you had ir irrigation. Right. You had ponds, irrigation ponds right on each farm. And you use that irrigation, especially if you had a brook, and you, you dammed it up and made a, a pond there, then if it was too dry, you made irrigation to so help you, it. You, otherwise, yeah. otherwise, if you didn't get no rain, that stuff's going to just dry up. That was your insurance against drought. That's yeah. right. That's so you, what, what year did you actually retire? 2002. 2002. Well, yeah. so you've been retired for seven years. Yeah. Are you keeping... Uh, Keeping yourself, I, well, I know you. Yeah. You're a busy guy, but yeah, but the, I'm I'm feeling good and doing everything right. You're enjoying it's, your retirement, right? Right. Great. Sure. Do you, uh, looking back, is there anything that you, uh, any, any memories of uh, specific to your employment that uh, that stand out? Is there anything that really jumps out? No, it's yeah. just that uh, I, I, I try to do everything the best I could. Okay. And even the company, they, they congrat congratulated me on saving the money. Right. Because <laughs> we, uh, I hope no buyer is, is going to listen to this one. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no uh, the, 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 uh, they, when we were selling tobacco, I was right. in the ware working in the warehouse, and I wound up uh, helping them sell tobacco. Right. I used to take samples of, like you would come to me and say, hey, we want to buy so much tobacco. Okay. And uh, you wanted the samples. So, okay, uh, how, many, how, many, how many bales do you think you want? How many pounds? Right. And then uh, what the grades are. I think they had something like uh, 25 different grades of tobacco. Okay. And uh, he'd say, okay, uh, get me some samples. So okay, I, I'd go and I'd pick out what he wanted. He'd tell me what the grades are and how many, and I'd go get the samples. And he'd come and he'd look at the samples, and then he'd he'd say, okay, we'll take these samples. Right. So in the meantime, he got those samples, but uh, uh, when he when he bought and got the tobacco, uh, he rejected so many. Right. And those that uh, were rejected, we already knew what the numbers were. Right. So when he came the next time to buy more, there's ones that he rejected. We put new numbers on them. Oh, okay. So <laughs> the same bales, but they're going to have a new number because you he sell already, them to somebody, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And we put the numbers, new numbers on it. Okay. And he bought the same thing. Oh, great. Okay. Hey. He bought them all, but eventually he rejected them because they didn't look good to him. Right. But we just changed the number and got a different sample and. He With a little more age, it looked a little says, better, I guess. Hey, he says, you know, we couldn't get rid of all that tobacco for all these years, and you come along here and you helped us out save so much, thousands of dollars, right. that, uh, by changing the numbers and the people are buying, and now we don't have nothing on, <laughs> in stock. We sold it all. Right, right. Frugal yeah. Tony, he got oh, the job done. There you go. I hope there's no, <laughs> nobody no going to watch that that's buying Some tobacco. Some tells me that the guys that were buying that tobacco yeah. aren't watching this job. <laughs> oh, we, I mean, uh, we were there to sell tobacco. Yeah. That's what you had to do. Yeah. You had to sell so the product. When a guy, we had two sets of samples. Right. The, the samples that went to that guy, they were already hand picked. And when he looked at that tobacco, it was perfect. There was nothing right. wrong with it. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming in. Yeah. And is there anything, I, I ask this of, of every guest, is there any advice that you would give to young people? If they had, a, if if they was still growing tobacco, I would say to the family, the, the right. mother and father, that those kids, they, if you want to give them a straight start, put them on tobacco. So you'd but suggest make them work. Don't let them come home and say, "Oh, that's too hard, and I can't do it." And this, tell them to go back. It ain't that hard for them to do it. And those kids have got all that energy, and they could do that kind of work. Right. And it, it teaches them something that they should have. About work. So hard work is good hard to establish work a work ethic. Hard work is good to establish a kid's growing up. Okay, great. And that for me is because when those boys would go home and the parents would come and say, Tony, you're treating them too hard. Right. I says, all right, don't let them come to work and you treat them the way you want to treat them, but when they grow up, they ain't going to know nothing. Right. Of what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. 
I said, you're treating them too easy. Let them come back to work and let them work, and they will learn something. Right. But right now, if, they, if they're going to complain to you that we're treating them bad, that's it. I said, why don't you come and see what the boys are doing? Okay. I said, you're will, you're, you want to talk about it? Come and see. Right. We'll invite you over. And you watch what your, your children are doing. So there's no doing. substitute for hard work. That's right. Right. And okay. Then the, then the complaints, if you got them, let us know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's, I even had my two girls in there, and they, they worked. They turned out good. They turned out good. Yeah, they're still well, working hard. They, they're still working. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. It's been a pleasure. It's, uh, yeah. And uh, we'll see you around town. Yeah. And uh, uh, you're you're doing these things. I'm going to see if I could get you some more stuff to, for. Okay. Yeah. That. You know, before we stop, why don't we just share a couple? Tony brought in some old pictures of some tobacco fields in in the area, and we'll see if we can get them on the camera here. Uh -oh. Oops! Oh, I forgot I was wired in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to forget, I guess. Okay. These are uh, two pictures that were taken of. This looks like it's uh, f fairly young shade tobacco. Shade if tobacco. Could, if we could zone in on this. Now they're planted under those tents. Under and, those tents. Uh, That's probably around uh, uh, June, uh, June fifteenth or so. Those plants right there for the size they are. So that's not. Yeah. They, they haven't been in the ground for too long. No. No. No, no because the trowel is right now. He's setting them out. He's putting them out now for. For, for the plants. Okay. Where I live now, trowel is planting over so there. So you now. really have to be past the cool nights to yeah. really put it in right. the ground. Right. Okay. Exactly. And, exactly. And, and those but I got these pictures from a fella that I don't even know who brought them. My wife says, a fella brought these two pictures. You're a tobacco man. He said, you should have them maybe. Uh, super. Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing with us. Yeah. We got one more here. And it is, it looks like it's pretty much the same. But it shows the, the sheds and everything it's, in it. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, I'm trying to get the light off it. There we go. That yeah. looks pretty good. Huh? Uh, that's just a, a back, uh, a, a backed up shot of the same, same probably mid June. Yeah. Growth for the tobacco. Yeah. But it gives you a good idea of the extensiveness of the tenting and the right. and all the effort that really goes into setting up the little greenhouse for these guys to grow, yeah. and they grow quick. That's right. But uh, when you put those tents down, it gets pretty hot under there, doesn't Ooh, it? Oh, yeah. it's, it's hot. It's moist. So it's moist under there. This is definitely not yeah. easy work. It's not no. easy work. But, but again, I would recommend it for anybody. I would recommend it for anybody. It's a good, uh, good lesson in life. Good lesson in life for sure. Well, it's been a pleasure, Tony. Okay, and we're gonna, very good. Okay. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is like a, I mentioned earlier, this is a third episode of Reflections on East Granby. And, and uh, we'll be hopefully taping a little more often because there's a lot of folks out there, if there's anybody that you know of, that you'd be interested in referring to us. Uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. And once again, thank you and happy Memorial Day 2009.